told to bring you on the show because I declined to debate with you anywhere else. Now, are you going to answer my point or not? Um, I certainly will answer your point, Mr. Galloway, once I've corrected your latest outburst. Certainly no one has ever heard of me. I'm hardly the most important writer in the world. But it's a technique you adopt with others, people far more distinguished than I, people far better known than I. My friend Christopher Hitchens, whom you won't turn up with after he whopped you in the Big Apple. Now let me turn to your question. Israel takes great steps to protect civilians from harm. The problem in the case of Hamas is that they hide behind civilians. They fire rockets from behind civilians. And this is the tactic that they adopt in order to avoid Israel retaliating with full force. Israel is now in the position where it must either call off its aerial campaign or send in ground troops. Because it respects civilian life, it has a dilemma that your friends in this conflict simply don't possess. Now, one of your other preoccupations is the radicalization, as you would put it, of Muslims. I just wonder what you think the impact on the radicalization of Muslims in Britain and around the world is likely to have been uh, with the pictures that we've been watching for this last six or seven days. Radicalization is a word I can tell you now, Mr. Galloway. I've never used in anything I've written. It just well, doesn't... You, you're, you're very concerned then, let me put it another way, about extremism amongst Muslims in Britain and around the world, aren't you? I'm concerned about theocratic extremism wherever yeah. it comes from, what if that th is the question. Okay, my question is, what do you think the impact on, I think your phrase was theocratic uh, extremism, what do you think the impact on that will have been of the pictures of the last seven days? Um, I certainly think that Israel, if it manages to deter further conflict in the region by ensuring that Hamas is not in a position to fire rockets at civilians in Israel proper, is going to have done the cause of a two-state territorial accommodation a lot of good, which will do a lot of good in the cause of restricting, containing and defeating the theocratic barbarism that you and your friends either do not recognize or ally with explicitly. So you think that people will be less theocratically extreme after they've watched the death of a hundred innocent civilians in Gaza, or 500, or 5,000 by the time this ends, they will be less extreme than they were before it started, do you? Um, I certainly think that if Israel manages to... Do you really work for the Times, or is it the, I, I don't know, the, the Aldershot Times? I mean, do you really write for what used to be the newspaper of record? Um, I wasn't aware, Mr. Galloway, that you had any particularly favourable view of the Times newspaper. Well, I just never thought that it would employ someone as a leader writer who could seriously say, I presume with a straight face, though I can't see it, I'm unlucky in that respect, that could seriously say with a straight face that extremists will be less extreme as a result of what they're watching on the television in Gaza. Mr. Galloway, if you would like to have my views rather than telling me what my views are, I can certainly tell you that the sensibilities of Islamist extremists or theocratic extremists, because I'm an equal opportunity despiser of religion, come what may, and particularly of its orthodox and fundamental variants, fundamentalist variants, um, I don't particularly care about the sensibilities of theocratic extremists. I just care about the protection. Yeah, but I'm asking, Mr. Kam, if there are going to be more of them rather than fewer of them as a result of what we've been watching the last seven days. Um, I think that the most important thing uh, in deterring theocratic extremism is for democratic states to prevail in their struggle against terrorism and for there to be a Pacific two-state territorial accommodation between a secure Israel and a sovereign Palestine. Well, last word to you. Why was there no two-state solution in the long years before Hamas became as powerful as they became when they won the election? Oh, there's a straightforward answer to that, Mr. Galloway, because Yasser Arafat declined to negotiate one at Camp David and Tabar in the year 2000. So you were as much against President Arafat's conduct of Palestinian affairs as you are of Hamas's, yeah? I was under the impression that the last word was given to me, Mr. Galloway. The were last you lying on that as you were? Uh, <laughs> the last word is indeed given to you. I've just asked you a question, 
and I presume you will now attempt to answer it. Oh, certainly. I think that uh, in the words of the late, great Israeli dove, the former foreign minister, Abba Iban, the Palestinian national movement has never missed an opportunity to miss an opportunity. And they did so in 2000 with the interlocutor Ehud Bar Barak, now the defense minister, then the Israeli prime minister, when they could have got an independent Palestinian state with Jerusalem as its capital. I want to see that. I regret that it hasn't been done in the past. Well, the last word was indeed yours, and it was up to standard with the rest of your words.